Hello friends of Spazio Rock, today we have Sonata Artica. Hello Elias, hello Henrik, first of all, welcome back to Milan. Thank you. You have uh, traveled a lot around the world, do you think that uh, has ever been a place in particular that uh, inspired your music? Yeah, home. <laughs> uh, of course, there's, uh, uh, I think uh, everything that you experience uh, inspires and, and uh, changes and affects you in some way. So, but I don't think that there's just one place that would have uh, had a really a lot of impact. Uh, I think it's just like when you travel around the world, you see a little bit here, a little bit there, and I think all that together affects you quite a lot. So, but I don't know if you can hear it in the music. <laughs> but yeah, I think you know everything. What you experience in your life affects your music somehow. So, in that way, I think. Uh, <laughs> but no uh, particular place that. <laughs> would come to my mind that the bonus CD of uh, the Days of Grace uh, limited edition is totally fascinating thanks uh, to the instrumental version of the songs have you ever thought to making an album with instrumental songs only no i don't think so <laughs> it's no. just uh, yeah it was something like uh, when we worked on the album and we had a lot of uh, symphonic parts there already so we just decided to to make different versions of the songs without drums and guitars and stuff like that so it's more like an experiment uh, for us and I think it sounds good but uh, I don't think we're gonna make a whole album just like that and uh, what about an unplugged show have you ever thought to do that maybe it would be fun to play unplugged and have a symphony orchestra or something like that but you never know but it's not yeah it's not something we have planned uh, or thought about too much, but of, of course, obviously, at some, time, some point we get old and <laughs> then we want to have an unplugged tour or something like that. that. That's definitely an option, yeah. Okay, guys, the newborn is rich of arrangements and wonderful melodies. How will you manage live the huge orchestrations? Uh, we're gonna have to use uh, background tapes for the orchestral parts. And, uh, of course, that it's, that's not always the nicest way to do it, but uh, it's really expensive to bring a symphony orchestra on tour, so it's impossible to do, right now at least, but maybe one day we can skip the background tapes and have really musicians play it. Uh, someone wrote that uh, Days of Grace is too much similar to the last Nightwish Dark Passion play. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's a good album, the <laughs> Nightwish album, so I don't care. <laughs> well, I think uh, there might be some, some, similar, some similarities, but... I don't think that uh, too much, no. Well, I mean, if uh, if somebody thinks that, then fine. <laughs> I, uh, I think uh, Nightwish does a great job, and if some stuff that we do sound like that, I don't care at all. I think it's just a positive thing. Uh, probably is uh, for uh, the orchestrations only. Yeah, I think uh, that also, because uh, we use so much orchestration on this album, and they use so much orchestration on their album, so I think that's, uh, that's the most similar thing, and, and of course that's uh, how... So, sometimes it feels like, you know, which album am I listening to or something like that. But uh, of course, we have very different singers and, and I think also that our songs are a bit different, so it doesn't bother us at least. Okay, uh, now, who drew the cover of The Days of Grace and what is its relationship with the title of the album? Um, well, uh, the cover was, uh, was done by uh, Toxic Angel. Uh, he's, uh, Janne Pitkan and he, um, he has done all our album covers since uh, Winter Arts Guild and on. And um, the title of the album was, we was, were trying to find ideas what to call the album and it was all just really bad ideas and stupid names. But then uh, uh, Tony was, was playing some online computer games with his friend and he just happened to mention that we have trouble coming up with a good name and then his friend was, you know, what about could it be this and then he told us in rehearsal and we were like yeah that, that's actually a good title so it's a friend of Tony who came up with that in my opinion uh, Junia is the worst Sonata Altica album uh, too much progressive and uh, too much distant from your praise your works um, Days of Grace is a return to the past a place where good melodies resides uh, Junia why the choice to do a, a so different city well, yeah, we had. Um, I mean, we were at a point where we felt that we didn't have anything more to say within the, the boundaries of of, of of traditional power metal. So uh, the option would have been to to make uh, two uh, 
albums maybe in that style and then finish off and stop working together. Uh, so instead we, we opted to, to make a change uh, just to sh shake uh, the cage a little bit and also uh, to pu push our limits and, and see how far, how far we really can go. And so uh, Unia was, uh, despite of, of, of uh, a lot of people not liking it that much, for us as a band that was something we really had to do in order to be able to continue. Okay, let's go back to the cover and looking uh, at the cover of your la latest album, uh, it is similar to your masterpiece Silence. Are there er any connection about Silence and uh, Days of Grace? Well, I think uh, since Tony writes uh, most of the music, I think there's always some connection with what we've done before. And uh, also for this album, we wanted to, to bring back some of the older influences, have a couple of faster tracks and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think definitely there is a connection. My favorite song of new album is The Last Amazing Grace, thanks to the dreaming melody. What is your favorite The Days of Grace song and why? Yeah, to me, Last Amazing Grace is also uh, my one of my favorites then uh, maybe uh, the truth is out there it's a little bit different kind of track but really like gets into your head yeah i like uh, well i think death hour is maybe my favorite right now because uh it's <laughs> it was something that started out uh, as just a, a small piece and then it got longer and longer and bigger and bigger and it's like uh, when we worked on it, it changed a little bit all the time and then when we heard the final version ourselves, we were like, what the fuck happened, you know? <laughs> so it, we surprised, uh, surprised ourselves there a little bit as well. So I think that's a, it's a really massive epic song, but I like it a lot. What are your future plans? Uh, I suppose touring, touring uh, and then touring. Yeah, and then touring some more. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to be on the road, I think, until 2011. So there's going to be a lot of tours coming up and uh, now after this tour we have two weeks off and then after that we go to Australia to play there on New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve and then from there we continue and, and play in Asia and Japan and so forth. And so this is what it's going to be for the next two years. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, see you on camera and uh, leave a message for uh, your Italian and uh, international fans. Thank you very much for the interview. Yeah, well... To all you people there in Italy, thanks for showing up. We have two hours until we go on stage. It's going to be great once again. And uh, to the rest of you, I think you just have to wait until we show up in your city to play. Cheers. Cool.